Okay, here are five quick tips for how you can help your child to have a healthy relationship with food. Before I share these five tips, I just wanna say, of course, this list is not exhaustive. And also, bearing in mind that our children are not only influenced by us, their parents, but also by social media, TV, friends, um, school, many different places where children get influenced. So this isn't to place sole responsibility on your shoulders, but I do believe that the healthier the home relationship is with food, the greater the chances are that our children are gonna grow up with a healthy relationship with food too. So these are my five tips. The first one is to be a good role model yourself. So that means being mindful of the language that you're using around food and around your body. It also means that if you have a troubled relationship with either food or your body to do the work on yourself so that you don't pass on your insecurities to your children. My second tip is to keep meal times stress-free. That means avoiding emotional or highly charged conversations. It also means not having too many food rules, not having too many like rules around meal times, like keep things as relaxed as you possibly can. Um, and also, I mean, I know how frustrating it is, but if you've prepared something or cooked something that your child does not like, if after trying it, I do believe trying it is important, but if they've taken that first bite and they say they don't like it, try not to get angry or lose your temper. Just make something very quick and simple as an alternative, like a boiled egg, for example. Um, my third tip is to replace rather than deprive. So for example, it's bedtime and they want to eat a sweet, rather than saying no, try to offer something instead, like explain to them that sugar at bedtime isn't a good idea, but that they could have an apple or they could have a warm cocoa or something along those lines, so that you're not introducing a power struggle, you're not just saying a flat out no, you're offering an alternative. My fourth is to teach children about nutrition. So explain to them what a balanced plate looks like. Explain to them the different qualities that our food brings to us. So, you know, if like, <laughs> if your kids are anything like mine, they would eat pasta all day long, but explain why just having pasta is not a balanced meal. Like it's great, it can be part of the meal, but that it's lacking in protein, it's lacking in important fats, it's lacking in fiber. And so, as you place those different elements on their plate alongside the pasta, you're just explaining how this makes this more nutritionally complete. And my fifth and final tip is if at all possible, go food shopping without your kids with you. <laughs> if you've ever food shopped with your kids, and of course it depends on the age of your kids, but if they're little, they are obviously marketed to just as we as adults are marketed to. And you know, all the brightly colored, beautiful packaging, um, which is, you know, put directly at their line, their eye height, um, it, it's so tempting and of course they want it. And so, um, you know, it normally ends in an argument or a power struggle. So my advice is to either do your uh, food shopping online or go shopping without them if you can. The other thing is if you do go food shopping with them, if you have to take them with you, then use it as an experience to teach them about nutrition and teach them about food. Let them choose any fruit and vegetables they want and give them that autonomy, give them that power to choose any fruits and vegetables that they like. Um, I mean, budget depending, of course, but if possible, you know, like let them feel that they've been making choices, that they've been contributing to the food shop. Also say yes to at least one of their requests. Say yes to at least one of their requests. You know, sometimes if I end up taking my youngest daughter food shopping with me, she sees a cereal that she wants like, um, the other day it was cinnamon squares and so I said yes to cinnamon squares I just I just explained to her this has a lot of sugar in it and it doesn't have a lot of uh, those other macronutrients in them so this is a delicious pudding but this isn't although it's marketed as a breakfast cereal this isn't what you're going to have for breakfast and I just explained it to her but I bought the cinnamon squares so it wasn't like a, a kind of baffle it wasn't about control it was just about saying okay yeah definitely we can buy this but this isn't breakfast um so like i said this is not an exhaustive list and you know there are there are other things as well and there are other influences too like i mentioned so you know don't feel that you know that you have to take all the pressure for yourself but you know 
It is also true that our stories, our narrative, our beliefs around food do often occur in childhood. And so the more exposure to having a healthy relationship with food in our body, the greater the chances that we're giving our kids to yeah, have that good relationship. I hope these were helpful.